now we're going to move on to the second activity of our eighth tutorial and what we'll be doing is making a pumpkin and now what we're going to do is we are going to go into our new design we're going to again go to create form because we're going to do form modeling and i want previously we created a box you can create a cylinder a quad ball a sphere whatever i i encourage you to try and explore with these but what i'm going to do is going to create a sketch instead and right now I'm going to select the front face to create my sketch. And this works the same way as with solid modeling, um, solid modeling of sketches. It does, it, it's exactly the same. So what I'll do is I'll select a line, go from the middle, I'll go up by about 80 millimeters. And this is how we can also help to um, sort of guide where we want to place our forms. And I'm going to select a fit point spline. Um, again, I might as well show you um, a different type of spline if you want. Um, here it is. There's a control point spline. I personally don't like to use this um, because I prefer the handlebars. It's more, it's more from a design background using 2D graphics, but whatever. I'll select the first point. Again, like the spine, I'm going to select out and down this time. All right, got the spine. And now you can see the way my spline is created is a little bit different. There's a control point. So in this case, I'm just going to create um, four rough ones. Actually, five is fine also. So again, I'm making a pumpkin shape. So again, hit enter. And now if I want to make um, changes to my curvature, I can control the points as well as these um, control points. So, if, if, I mean, if you want, you can use these um, spline types if, if you prefer. I prefer the handlebars because it gives me a little bit more uh, control. But in this case, I'm just going to make a rough shape, something like this, right? So if you were to cut a pumpkin in a quarter, this is kind of what it would look like. And we want to be very sure not to connect this just leave it out somewhere here, like so. And that's just so we can put the stem in later. For now, I think this looks okay. Maybe a little bit lower here. Okay. So I'm going to finish the sketch. And now I can see I've got my spline. and my Or my sketch, rather, with the spline. And what I can do is I can also create uh, forms using sketches, right? So I'm going to go down to modify, uh, sorry, create. And I'm going to revolve this because I want to make it... Um, a pumpkin, right? So if I select my profile, oops, I forgot also to. That's supposed to be a construction line. Yeah. So I, it's okay. I can. You notice that it's not going to save any of your edits in the timeline. This is just part of form modeling, but that's fine. I can go to my sketches here. Hit X, change it to sketch, and now it should work. Yep. So I'll create. I'll select this line, revolve this, select my axis as the line I drew, and now you can see I've got a sort of pumpkin ball shape. Okay, um, f right now don't hit OK yet, I just want to explain some stuff, but for now you can see what I have this shape. This is not a solid body because um, obviously you can see it's just a line, so it's more of a surface, you have to think of it like a surface at this point. But anyways, with this um, like so, what I'm going to do is I can actually increase the number of faces using either this arrow here, or I can select the faces there. In this case, I find it's easier to just do this. And you see, I can increase the number of faces. I can make it a lot. I can make it less. You don't want to make it too many, obviously. In this case, I'll just make it 16. So I've got 16 faces. Now, if you think about a pumpkin, it has those um, sort of ridges, I would say like valleys in between um, going from the stem to the bottom. You sort of understand what I'm saying. But for now, um, let's just go to symmetry. We're going to select circular because this is a circular. It's a revolute. So now it's going to ask us how many symmetric faces, right? In this case, we can select the number of faces we have, which is, oops, so not 16, we have one. And now you can see the green line is going through all of our edges like so. And that's because, as you see later when I hit OK, if I were to select this one line, you can see all of them are selected. Because again, similar to how we did with the earphone, we had that mirror effect. This is just going to mirror things, but in a circular um, symmetry so now if I let's just say move this out you can see everything is moving along with it like so Control Z if I were to rotate this everything rotates with it so with this you can make some really interesting shapes which you'll do actually in the next activity for now okay, so I've got this symmetry I'll hit OK and now I've got the symmetry alternatively let's just say I didn't do that let's just say I went back into my form so I'm going to revolve again, select this, select the axis. 
and 16 faces. I'm not going to put uh, symmetry on, I'm just going to put none. You can see the difference here if I select this edge and move this, now only this edge moves. You see? So this is why you might want to consider symmetry. But anyways, here I've got this. What I'll do is I can always manually edit. Um, I'll use it here, symmetry. And I'm going to select circular internal. Because if I do circular duplicate, then it's going to, as you can see from the picture, duplicate it around an axis. I don't want to duplicate it, I just want to have that same uh, internal symmetry. So in this case, I'm going to select the face that I want, which is here. You can select anyone really, it doesn't matter. And it's going to give you a few possible symmetries. So in this case, if you have two-sided symmetry, then on, only those two will be symmetrical, you get what I mean, right? Uh, for now, we're going to do 16-sided symmetry. This will give us all 16 sides of symmetry because we have 16 faces. Um, and we're going to hit OK. And just like that, we also have the symmetry that way. So if you ever forget or if you need to make some changes, then we can always add the symmetry um, in after the fact. So now that we've got our symmetry, we know we can always test it. We can move, you see, move spine, that's fine. Control Z, cancel. Um, so now that we have this symmetry, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the ridge that I was talking about, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to select this edge here. And again, like we did in the previous activity, we are going to um, modify, insert edge, and we can drag this out like so. You see how this edge is there now? Now this one I'm going to do 0 0.25. I've explained what this does um, before. Hit OK. Oh, and it, you see, it's, it's, sort of, it's already sort of doing what I want to do like this, but in this case, I don't actually want it to do that. And I'll explain why that happened in a second, or at least why I think it happened. I'll select the edge, 0 0.25, and instead of simple, I'm going to do exact, right? And so when I hit OK, now you can see it's exact. It didn't do that change. So sometimes if your model doesn't behave the way you want it to, just check some of the other settings, make sure that um, they're not... Um, change from what you want to be. So in this case, I want to be exact. So now with this, um, what I can do is I can then select these. And again, because we have our symmetry here, anything that we do is all symmetrical, like so you can see. When I select the faces, all the yellow faces here are all symmetrical. So I don't have to worry about adding symmetry twice. So again, what I just said just now, go instead from simple to exact. Right now, what we want to do is we want to create the edge. So again, similar to how we created um, curvature, what we can do is we can now select the edge, but I don't want this. Now, I'll just show you right now, if I select this entire edge, go to modify, and I were to say, um, let's just push this in. Oh, one more thing to note also is that you can see how if I'm pushing this in, I'm actually going to turn it. I don't want that. For Just for this demonstration, I'll just pull it in manually like so. You can see, right, my face here has this um, star shape, which can be quite cool, but that's not what I want in my pumpkin. The pumpkin doesn't really have this kind of a star shape as far as I'm aware. Again, we don't get many pumpkins. But so what I want to do is I actually want to leave this um, face alone. Right, so I'm going to select um, these lines here and I'm going to leave this alone as well. I'm going to modify. Again, I'm going to just drag this in a little bit. And now you can see it's a bit more like a pumpkin shape, but it's still too smooth, right? So. Remember back when I created the form, I only selected um, the vertical edges. I actually want to add more uh, faces here. So again, I could go into the subdivide, or in this case, I'll just again insert edge. Double select. And now you can see I can position my edge however I want. I'll just put it... Um, actually, in this case, I don't want it here because what I really want is to put an edge closer to the middle here. So again, I'll go to modify, insert edge. Select these, double click to select the entire line. I'll pull it in a little bit more, like so. Hit OK. Now I have an edge there. Go up, do the same with this. Insert edge, select my entire circle. Pull it back in closer to around here. This is where it was sort of smoothen out. Hit OK. And just like that, I've already modified uh, my sort of um, degree of freedom. I've got more faces to work with in this case. So again, I'll do the same thing, but without selecting the this line here, as well as the bottom line there. I'll show you here. And before I do that, I actually want to go up to top. And I want to see which um, line here um, aligns with one of my axes. In this case, this, um, let me see. Or as, at least as close to it as possible. 
I can always just use this line actually, it doesn't matter. So I'll select this line here, and what I mean by that is if I click, so I'm going to select this line, all the middle lines essentially, except the very bottom and the very top, and if you see, if I go to modify, my arrows are aligned to the origin, like so, so if you look at the top, you can see, and so when I push this in, it's going to be perfectly um, straight. Alternatively, I can always use this um, move tool, but I find it's a little bit more um, ambiguous. So with that, I'm just going to push in a little bit. I don't need to pull it too much. Hit OK. And you can see now that I've got my little pumpkin shape, but my circle is still kept intact. Mm. Right? So with this, this is still the same. That's fine. I've not uh, changed it. The reason we don't select this bottom line is because if we then push it in, it's going to overlap and then it'll break your model. So that's fine. Now we've got our pumpkin shape. So now we need to create uh, the stem, essentially, right? And so what we want to do with the stem is, again, select the middle, hit the edit form, and we want to extrude the face out, right? So how do we extrude? We hold alternate, select the middle one here to pull it in, and now we have our little divot that our stem goes into. We're going to hold alternate, pull up our stem, and like this is extruding our, our stem while keeping the rest of this intact. But now watch, what if I want to give this stem a little bit of a lean, you know, I, I, want, to, I want this to just lean a little bit, right? Oops. Um, you can see right now with the symmetry, if I try to move it, it's actually going to move and expand this, which I don't want at this time. So with this, I'm just going to hit OK. Wait for it to load. And now I don't want this symmetry anymore. I'm happy with my pumpkin shape. I'm going to go to symmetry. I'm going to select clear symmetry. I'll select everything in this case. Hit OK. And now you can see my symmetry lines are all gone. If I try to do the same thing ad again, so I select the stem, and now I try to move this, you can see now it moves without the symmetry, right? And in this case, uh, I want to give it a little bit of a curve in this case. So what I'll do is I'll move the face here. But you can see it's still straight, right? Because I'm moving it. It's still flat. If I move this way, it's flat. So what I can do is I can curve this by giving it an angle. So I'll do something like this, maybe. I'm going to extrude it out again. Again, give it a little bit of an angle. And now we want our stem to be tapered in, right? It's, it's becoming smaller. It's not going to be massive. So I'll again use this to shorten my edge. And I think this is fine. It looks okay. I'm going to hit... OK, just to double check, you can see how we've created that stem shape using our alternate to extrude tool. And now we can close this two ways. Um, if you're old school like me, what I'll do is I'll just hold alternate, click this, drag it in, right, let go. You can still select the value. I'll just type 0, hit enter, and this will automatically close it all because we're telling it to essentially compress into a single point, right? And this, this will work fine, um, but if, say, you don't want to do that way, so I'm going to go back, what we can do is we can go and select our circle here, the ring. I believe it was in... What was it, what was it called? I forget the term. Um, collapse. So we're going to look for collapse. It's fine, I can't find it here. Again, this is why the shortcut tool is useful as collapse. Does it not have collapse? Oh, fill hole, sorry, it's called fill hole. My, my mistake. So you're looking for fill hole. So as you can see here, by default, it's going to fill it like this, which is not what we want. This is a reduced star fill. In this case, we just want to collapse, which is exactly the same thing as I did before. You can play around and, and see what kind of shape you want. I think collapse is fine. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got exactly the same thing. So now we have our pumpkin. This is our pumpkin shape here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish the form. And you can see now I have an incredibly complex um, shape, right, that you would never be able to make really in uh, using CAD. Um, and it is a body as shown here. But if I try now, and I'm actually a little bit hesitant to do this because it could crash, but if I try to shell this, let's just do a three millimeter, you can see it's not letting me shell. Now why is that? Again, I don't know. Fusion is just weird that way, right? But it's a body, yes. So if I construct the section analysis, Bang. Solid body. There's geometry. Right? 
So again, this is how you can create very complex solid bodies with form. But as we try to shell it, we can't, and a, a jack-o'-lantern has a hollow inside, right? So what can we do? No worry, we can always go back to our form, which is here in the timeline. Do not click this again, because if you click this, you can see we're making a new form, right? So Control z select the form body here. And what we can do is we can actually select Modify, and we can go down to Thicken here. So thicken sounds exactly what it is. You have a surface. So right now, think of this as a surface. And for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to delete these faces. So this is now, when I finish form, going to become a surface because there is no, it's not manifold, right? So think of it as like a surface in the form body um, view like this. All this right now is just a surface. It could have a geometry if we made it a solid body, but it's still just a surface. In this case, we go to modify, thicken, and we're going to thicken that surface, if that makes sense. So we do three. Uh, we're going to do, instead of sharp, as you can see, it's going to look horrible. We're going to do soft, and this will give it more of a soft um, curve. Direction normal should be fine. Hit OK. And you can see our thing has, our pumpkin has been thickened. That's fine. If I now go to finish form, you can see it's still a body. But if I section analysis this, it's a shell. See? So what is done is taken this surface, thickened it up by three millimeters, and then now we have our shell body, right? So if this, we are happy with that. Again, if you don't like this pumpkin being so, like having such a fat uh, little phallus, what we can do is we can again go back to our shape. We'll undo this, oops, undo the thicken, and we can always just contract this entire thing. I'm gonna select here. And you would select uh, with the paint tool maybe, I'm just gonna be a bit lazy and just make this smaller like so. Hit OK. Fin uh, I gotta thicken this again. Thicken. Soft 3, OK. Now you can see it's a little bit more like what we had at the start. So again, play around with your, your model. I'm happy with this. So with this, we go to create sketch. Um, we don't wanna create the sketch in the middle here. We'll offset the plane. Offset to the front. Create a sketch here. We'll make a simple jack-o'-lantern face. I'm not going to be too um, fancy with this. Oh, not rectangle line. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to be lazy and make a mirror line in fact. So yeah, I'll just make this a construction. Make whatever design you want. You can do an angry face or whatever. In this case, I'm actually, I've got a better idea. I'll just do this. It's a very... Um, uh, you use the construction thing? What? Yeah, it's a very confused or chill thing, whatever. So with this, I can select my sketches. And because it's a solid body, I can always just cut it in, like so, cut. And now I have my jack-o'-lantern pattern however I want it to be, right? But if I want to make this for 3D printing, then this is going to be horrible, right? There's no flat surface here on the bottom. So what can we do? It's easy, we can always just again create an offset plane. And in this case, I think the top one there, because remember our sketch was on the top, that's fine. We can hit, uh, we don't actually need the offset plane in this case. We'll just do split, uh, come on, split body, just like this. For our tool, we'll select the bottom plane. If I can't see it, I'll just zoom out, it's easier. And now it'll split the bottom, hit OK. And now if I remove this, it will print. But this is really not very nice. We don't want it to, you know, look like this. So how do we cut out, um, not such a big chunk, but maybe just up to here where, where it starts, start, sort of starts to meet the bottom, you know what I mean? Essentially, let's just say we want to make a, we're gonna, I'm just gonna cut this here, so I'll create an offset sketch, demonstrate what I mean. If we hit create sketch, we're just gonna create a circle. One, finish sketch. If I extrude this to cut it, you can see that if I cut it, maybe not so far in, just around like where it starts it's actually like here let's just do that okay yeah we cut this you can see now i've got a flat surface but i don't really want this part in here what can i do let's try delete and now delete has essentially removed it and moved that face here and given me a more um, flat surface but then our, our problem is if we go into session analysis let's do here this is just going to waste your material and maybe you don't really want it to be flat. You want to put a candle inside. Um, most jack-o'-lanterns would have a hollow bottom, in fact. So what we can do here is we can again just go to... We have our flat surface, just create a sketch if you want. It's just an easy way. 
for me to do this, I'll just select a circle, maybe around this size. Uh, finish sketch. Hit E, select both the faces here. I can now cut through. And now I have my jack-o'-lantern that is still flat. It's got that flat surface if I want it. If, if I want to double track, I can always just put another flat cut again. But for now, I'm happy with how this will print. I think it'll be fine. Um, and now what I want to do is also give this a cover. But I can't, this is a lot more complex, so I can't just cut it away. So if you think about how you would do it in real life, you're going to use a knife and going to cut it at an angle. So let's recreate the path of the knife. And this is going to be a bit more of an abstract um, way of thinking. But I'm going to give an offset like so, maybe a bit higher. Hit OK. I'm going to offset plane. I'm going to create another sketch. And I'm going to draw the circle that I want to sort of cut out from and make it a little bit bigger. Right, and you'll see why I do this. So I'll finish sketch. And right now what I'll do is I'll go to my surface and I'll pretend this is sort of like how I will cut my knife. So I'll select this, I'll go and hit extrude in my surface. I'll go down, this is a cylinder, you can see it's a surface. And just like how we can do with the regular extrude tools, we can always give this a taper. I'll give this maybe a 20 degree taper, like so. So now, imagine sort of like this is the knife blade that it's going past, you're cutting in a circle, right? This is sort of an abstract way of thinking, like I mentioned. Hit OK. And now if we split the body, we can select this as our splitting tool. We'll select the body here. Now tool, you'll select this, see it's in a cone. The reason it's in a cone is because I have this extended splitting tool. I don't want this. I just want it to only be my face that I created. Hit OK. Remove the face. And now, if I were to move this, I'm going to hit M to move. You can see I've kept my original shape with my hole that I can then put candles or treats or whatever I want inside. All right. And again, if you want to make this easy for printing, just hit OK. You can again just delete the bottom one. You can um, extrude the path, patch, whatever you want. It's it's sim it's easy enough. With this, because there's a curved line, if I try to patch, you can see it gives me a shape. That's fine. I can also hit OK. Uh, boundary fill. What I'll do is... Uh, oh, I can, actually, this would be a lot easier for you. Just use stitch. Stitch these two together. You can see now I've got my body again. And from here, I can then just offset, create my sketch, and cut it down flat. Okay? So this is how you sort of play with the geometry. You can see how we started from a form model, and now we're again using the solid body and the surface modeling tools to create our final shape. So the, f the sort of reason for that is, I'm trying to show you that with the original form modeling, what you would do is you would create as close of a shape to what you wanted, and then the finer details would be added on using your solid or surface modeling tools in Fusion. So that's that for this activity. Again, play around with the design. You can always go back to your form and change certain things. If I want this to skew left, whatever, I want to make it smaller, you can do it here.